All right, March 17th, and this is Jake Baker Raw. Tonight we have a guest coming on covering a subject that we have not, 139 shows in, we still have not covered this subject. And it's one I'm particularly interested in because it's got me thinking. As I was doing some research for this, for this subject tonight, I looked in my area, and this doesn't exist in my immediate area. I mean, where I live is pretty big, so I'm, I'm sure there's a number of them around here. But in my particular town, there's not one. So I started thinking maybe I should start a photography club. So tonight we had Ron McCarty coming on to talk to us about photography clubs. Ron, how are you? Howdy, Mike. I'm doing good. And Ron, you run a photography club. Oh, and welcome, Tim. I should say, hey, Tim. Hello, Hello Mike. Hello, Ron. <laughs> Howdy. Before <laughs> uh, for we get started, I know some people want me to get right into things. Some people say, hey, do a little bit of stuff on the front end. That All that stuff we normally do, in the, we used to do in the front end, talking about where you can get the show, what's going on, how you could possibly maybe win this sometime. Uh, we'll do that in the back end. So if you're looking for that, and, you know, make sure you stay toward the end of the show. I'll cover all that stuff in the back end. But we want to get right to to Ron and the topic here in the front of the show. So, Ron, you are in a photography club out in Texas, right? Yes. It's uh, it's actually in Rollett, Texas, which is a suburb of Dallas. Uh, so right outside the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Okay. Well, before we get into the photography club, tell us a little bit about you and how you got into photography and then uh, what type of photography you like to shoot, you know, what kind of things you like to shoot. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit of a long story, but I guess I'll make it short. So I've always been into photography. Uh, growing up as a kid, it was, it was pretty expensive, so we didn't do a whole lot of photography because of the development cost. But my mom would buy these little Kodak 110s, I think they were called, the little 110 cameras. And when she wasn't paying attention, my brother and I would like to get those out and take some pictures with them. And then... Uh, Later in life, as digital come around, that was just the uh, saving grace for me. It's uh, you could there. It's relative. <laughs> my wife would laugh. It's relatively inexpensive per picture, and so the digital rebel came out. I guess when was that? Two thousand, two thousand one, maybe, or was oh, a little God, bit later, yeah. maybe. So it came out. It was a they. You know, they marketed it as the first digital SLR for under a thousand dollars. So that's kind of how I got into uh, what else? What I'll call real photography. Okay. And uh, I like to – I'll pretty much photograph anything. I do, I do favor uh, music photography. I like photographing live blues here in the Dallas, uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area. But I also enjoy landscapes. Uh, my wife and I also run a photography business, and we do, uh, we do wedding photography. Okay. Uh, now, is this, a, is this a full-time business, or is this something you all do? It, it's a not. It's a, it's a part-time business. Okay. We do have a studio. We do have plans or hopes to go full-time, but uh, – Making that leap is such a big leap. It is. It yeah. is. And, yeah. And I'm in IT during the day, and it's uh, pretty lucrative in Dallas Fort Worth. So. Oh yes. You, you give up. You give up a lot. To <laughs> give up a lot. So we should talk offline about IT because I one of the things I do for my job is is IT. Oh okay. Uh, I'm, I'm over the IT section, so we can talk about that offline. Okay. Uh, cool. Yeah. You know, photography is one of those things. As I'm sure you, you know, you and your wife are, are looking at is something that you can start building up clients and start building up work without having to quit your day job. Right. And then you right. can, you know, at some point it's going to, it has to teeter over, you know, you just, mm -hmm. and you decide mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm not quite there, but I'm, I'm ready to switch over. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's gotta be a scary time, but, sure. but at least yeah. you can, you can gain the experience and gain the feel for running a photography business without having to quit your day job. Exactly. And, and the, the two types that I focus a lot on the wedding photography, the music photography, those happen. You know, that type of stuff generally happens outside of business hours. So right. it kids, you know, if I'm not too tired, I can do it. Yeah, because, you know, fortunately, uh, the people that you're usually probably photo photographing, you know, weddings and, and other mm -hmm. things, they got jobs and they're working yeah. during the day. So they're exactly. looking to do these things at off hours that, and that works out pretty good for you. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, what, we're, what we're talking about tonight is photography clubs. And I have never been a member of one. Tim, have you ever been a member of one? Oh, Tim muted himself because of last week. <laughs> no, no, I am not a member. Of course, and this is the time you asked me a question. No, I am not a member either. And uh, I, I can't say that I ever really looked at it. Uh, I mean, my time's pretty busy anyway, normally, so I, I can't see myself really doing it. But uh, I, I have read articles from photography clubs, and I've seen other people involved in it. And probably the closest I would say ever was to one was probably uh, through, through um, a, a group, but not actually meeting anybody. It was online. 
Okay. And that's years, years ago. I think it was a Yahoo group that I belonged to years ago, back okay. then from Minolta. Mm -hmm. And what All we're right. talking about here uh, is photography clubs that you physically meet, not not like uh, yeah. not like our JPEG to Raw group or Ron. You have a group related to your photography group, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Facebook group. We're talking about you know a, photo, a photography club where you have physical meetings, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So we uh, we meet uh, we meet regularly. Once a month, that I guess that you could call that a formal meeting, where we actually get together and talk about photography, uh, do different events, and then we have little uh, photo walks where we try to get uh, at least three to four people out at a time to actually go photograph something, uh, anything that folks are interested in, basically. How, how long have you been in uh, this this the club you're in now? Uh, so this is now four four months going. Okay, coming coming up, and uh, we started it right before the. Uh, January, uh, December, actually. So, oh, so your club is brand new all by itself. Yes, it is. It is. Uh, I had actually helped start a club uh, out at my full time job uh, related to the company I worked for, Photo Club, and uh, I really enjoy it. But it's actually at the location and not here where I live. So I thought, well, let's give it a try here. Looked around, didn't see any. There is there is a Meetup dot com, of course. And there are quite a few of those here in Dallas, but those tend to be more of a resource pooling type situation where uh, typically a professional photographer will get folks together and they'll use a studio and he'll charge 10 to $40. They'll get together, talk photography, but, you know, do a model shot or uh, a maternity shot or something like that. So it's not really, it's not really just, you know, to talk about photography per se, it's more to do something than but uh, as far as I know, we're the only uh, photography club that that meets like old school, old school. So I just I just pulled that site up, uh, Meetups.com, mm -hmm. and there's there's a number of them that are happening right here in my town. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. see Swanee. Wait, that's I don't know about this one. Awaken Swanee Law of Attraction Meetup Group. Some of these may not be <laughs> Atlanta single parents. Okay, I'm not in that one. Yeah. Um, here you go. Parks and Sw of Swanee. Let's go walking. Wait, or, or wait, is Meetup.com all photography meetups, or is just? No, it's anything. Okay. It's uh, a lot of lot of hobbies. Uh, you know, there's uh, crafts. There's uh, models. You'll see models that actually meet up that way. So I gotta be so careful if I show up for women and wine on Wednesdays with my tripod yeah. and my camera. <laughs> <laughs> it'll go over real well or not at all yeah yeah okay so lesson there but you could you can use these i guess this you can use this meetup meetup.com to organize your meetup or something it, it, exactly okay. and it uh it gives you a, you know when you don't know people it gives you a certain amount of uh i guess security or at least you feel a little secure and we actually use it to announce people we do use it to recruit a little bit but uh facebook is much more effective for the for the actual recruiting Okay. Okay. So how how many now you said yours is only like four months, but you know, when do mm -hmm. I know some photography clubs are, mm -hmm. you know, years old, decades old. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, basically ph photography clubs have been around since there's been photography. Right. I mean mm -hmm. it, it's it's mm -hmm. old school. I have mm -hmm. no stats on whether they're thriving as more people get more interested in photography or whether they're uh, falling back because there's so many people that are just doing everything in virtual life, you know, Facebook and everything. I don't know if you know anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we we've, we've talked about it with the members. Uh, there's 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 one thing that the physical club has an advantage of, and that's actually you get to know the person that actually took the picture, uh, which has its advantages and disadvantages. If you like the person, then uh, then you enjoy their pictures more. If you right. If you don't care for the person, then then you know you may not care for the photography as much. The disadvantage it really has, or what folks have admitted to, is that most of us are introverts. Uh, we photography can be a very uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, it, it lends itself to folks that that are that are introverts. So yeah, it's uh, I think a social type club is probably much easier to recruit and, and get your numbers up quickly because you know it, it's a little bit safer. It's online. And you don't you don't have to commit any time. You 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 get online. You post your picture for critique, or you critique someone else's, or you ask your question, or you answer questions. And so so there's there's positive pros and cons to it. And uh, 
we're up to, I, I didn't look, I meant to look before I jumped on here. We're about, up to about 100 members on the Facebook oh. group and about 20 to 25 people actively participate, uh, come to the meetings and uh, share their photography and uh, that type of thing. Okay. Um, so, you know, thinking of that, thinking of introverts and, you know, a mm-hmm. lot, I, I don't know, I've seen, I know photographers on both sides. I know mm-hmm. a lot of them who, it seems like there's a, it seems like they go one or two ways. Uh, ones like me who are more introverted that whenever I'm shooting, I really want to be unseen and just, mm-hmm. uh, right. you know, I don't, I want to blend in and nobody know I'm there. Then mm-hmm. there's other photographers I know that are more, much more extroverted and, mm-hmm. and, and get out there. Uh, mm-hmm. What, you know, if I'm somebody, if somebody like me, you know, why should I join a photography club? So the, the real thing that it brings you is just meeting other photographers in the area. Uh, it's so it's, if you want to, you know, go to places that, and see things a little bit different, for example, uh, we went out and did a HDR shot, uh, for, for the photographers that hadn't did HDR and give them up that opportunity to actually ask questions and see how it works. And for the ones that were just looking for something else to shoot, uh, it, it was actually, that particular shoot was out on highway 66, which is the main, main highway going through here. And everybody just sees it as industrial street. Uh, but in this case, you know, the, the, you know, the couple of folks said, wow, I never thought I could get such beautiful looking pictures out of a industrial looking bridge across the, across the lake. So that's really the two things it gives you just a different perspective and, and to be exposed to thing. Another one is infrared photography. That seems to be very, uh, create a lot of interest right now. Uh, infrared is basically, it's very contrasty black, generally black and white photography. Right. And so folks have never seen that before. I mean, I had seen it before, but even myself, I'm, I'm much more interested in it now since I've been exposed to one of our members, uh, Tony. He's just excellent in it. He just does beautiful work. So it's just something that I wouldn't be a, been exposed to. You know, ironically, you would think it would be the opposite online. Yeah, you would think you would have, and and I guess you are depending on the the you know the the Facebook groups, the Google Plus groups that you hang out. So that's that's really what you what it brings you is just being exposed to something that you may not have been. Expect you know, it's something you may not may enjoy that you didn't think you would. Right. Well, Ron, we actually did a show on infrared photography back uh, a while back. So, okay. and it's something you know. For me, um, I, I love shooting infrared. I don't do it enough. But this mm-hmm. season, for me, the season I like to do it the most is coming up right now. Is right. Is, is spring? You know, when you get all that the yeah. green out there and all yeah. that, yeah. it's a great mm-hmm. time. Plus, uh, infrared is one of those things you can shoot in the middle of the day. Middle of the day, and you're in Atlanta, and I'm in Dallas. So you know, yep. we have large chunks of bright daylight. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> So uh, in your group, uh, and let's talk more about the physical group, the, mm-hmm. the not mm-hmm. instead of the online group. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what is the skill level? Are you talking people who are coming in with a point and shoot, or or maybe somebody who's got their first DSLR? Are you, these all professional photographers, or what level are we looking at there? So I would say probably a quarter of them are uh, professional, and I mean professional in the uh, traditional sense. They're trying to make some money. Uh, intermediate, there's probably, I'm thinking of the active members because with the, the, with the folks that just kind of lurk in Facebook, it's really hard to tell, uh, you know, their skill level, uh, right. probably intermediate, which in some cases, some of our intermediate, uh, I, I guess I should be careful how to say this. <laughs> uh, some of our intermediate, uh, shooters are better. I'll, I'll say it for my, myself. I'm trying to make money at it. And there's intermediate shooters that are, that are better photographers than I am. Mm-hmm. And then probably the rest would be either beginner or maybe advanced beginners, I would, I would think. It sounds like so, you got a good mix. It's a very good mix, uh, and we're trying to keep it that way. We really, we, we really want to keep it focused on uh, photography, either taking the picture or processing the picture. Uh, we're, not, uh, you know, we're, not, we're not wanting to market to each other. Uh, we're not tra- you know, uh, if, I've asked... If, if it seems to get a little sideways with a beginner asking for too much help from a photographer, you know, I'll just message them and say, hey, you know, you need to, you need to keep it to the group. You know, the group's here for you, not a particular professional and vice right. versa. Uh, early on, we had some professionals that, that, you know, wanted to market to all of us. And I said, hey, you know, we can, we can put up with a little bit of that, but, you know, not daily and not weekly. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, we keep a good mix. And we're going to try to keep it that way. We're trying to, we're trying to offer things that, uh, that will keep everyone interested. Okay. Do y'all have any like club fees or anything like that? We do not. Uh, we, uh, so my wife and I actually buy the uh, drinks and food for the meetings and then we, we pass the plates and it's, it works out that way. So, 
Uh, it's something a couple of folks have asked about because in Texas, you, uh, one of the advantages of clubs or nonprofits is you can have uh, raffles. Okay. And, and that does kind of interest me, right, where you, where you, you know, sell a $5 raffle and give away a digital rebel or the Nikon equivalent or something like that. And clubs do that. But right now I just want to, I want to keep it kind of simple and, and you know, yeah. kind of see where we're going before we get it in. You know, and, that, and the raffle also has a side of who, who sells it, you know, that, you know, it gets a little more complicated. So right, right. now it's, it's, it's free. It's, uh, and uh, one of our members actually knew someone, uh, at the uh, Rollett Civic Center, so we actually get our meeting room there, and we have a nice meeting room with uh, with a projector and good audio and good good video. So yeah, that's what my next question is going to be: where you meet and and uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of your photographers that are on the maybe the more professional side, and maybe amateurs too, I don't know, uh, mm -hmm. have color calibrated monitors at their house, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you know, you go to this meeting room, mm -hmm. and who knows what you're getting, mm -hmm. and if you're doing any kind of critiquing of the images, how do you? You know, dude, your your white balance is off, and it's not the white balance at all. It's the it's the, the projector. Yeah, so that's that's a that's a couple of questions. Uh, the so the monitor is actually pretty good, and we actually had so we haven't started critiques, but we're doing what's called a five uh, what do we call it? And I made up the name for it: five photos in five minutes. Okay. And so and we we did this in our meeting last time, and so me and a fellow by the name of Tony Tony and me went first. And I did notice that it had issues with yellows. And uh, Tony Tony has a lot of contrasty pictures, and he does like yellow. And some of mine, just because I picked a theme that had a lot of yellow, I could see that it was off. And we, I mean, I I could have got on the Mac. I, I could actually bring my color monkey with me and that type of thing. But we're just gonna. I think everybody kind of gets that uh, that it's okay. kind of. You know, there now when when we get into critique, we do have folks that are interested in critique. And we actually set up a little side group. I, I can't quite get my head around how to do that because uh, it, it, it's, it's just difficult. Uh, folks are in different – I think the folks have to get to know each other probably first. Or uh, we had a good suggestion, anonymous, where you actually uh, – anonymous both sides, either anonymously give the picture and then everyone speaks out so you kind of know who said what. Or someone suggested vice versa. Uh, you know who the pitcher is, and then uh, you pass around three by five index cards, and you let uh, you let folks anonymously say uh, say what they like. So uh, critiques are a funny thing, though, right? What they I are. Found, what I found is that yeah. everybody wants them, but no one. And I'm not not just picking on our group, but in, from other groups I've seen, very very few people will really put their uh, put their work out there. Now it used to be that the internet was just a mean place, right? Yep, yep. I mean, it used to be, you know, you just jerks would just come out of the woodwork. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of te what, what I call technical photographers, folks like myself that, that appreciate or enjoy the technical side of it would just, you know, beat, beat the living daylights out of you. If you, if your picture was a little sh uh, soft or, you know, or whatever, but I don't, I don't know if that's still a case. Most, most groups have pretty good admins. They don't put up with a lot of, uh, what, what yeah, folks call trolling. You know, in the JPEG Raw group, the number one rule is be nice. Um, but, exactly. But yeah. you, you know, you're right in that critique is a is a strange beast in that uh, it's it's a good way to grow. It's a good way to get better. Mm -hmm. But it it takes both sides, the receiver and right. the giver, to have mm -hmm. the right attitude because the 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 the, the person giving the critique needs to make sure they're doing it from a way that they're trying to mm -hmm. assist the other person rather than beat them down. Exactly. Um, exactly. And now they may be doing that, and the person receiving it may interpret yeah. it differently so right. what, what would be interesting is whether that uh some of that is uh, interpretation is because we're typing back and forth and there's, there's very little mm -hmm. emotion in the type mm -hmm. word exactly where uh if you're in you know in person i wonder if if that might actually be better because mm -hmm. some people will maybe they'll tone themselves down a little bit and be less of a jerk mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. give the feedback plus the person's right there they can say what did you mean by that, oh, that exactly and exactly. then they can give better yeah. feedback yeah, I'm yeah. hoping I'm hoping we can we can come up with some model to do that because it, it that I think that would be one of the advantages of a of a physical club over a how did you say, the, the, you don't get the body language is it's I'm summarizing what you said but yeah you basically yeah and that and we do we've set it up virtually we I, I submitted a couple of my pictures and uh, another fellow submitted some of his we tried it anonymously at first and. So, but we're gonna we got we got it on the we got it on the agenda to address again, and we're gonna try it physically. So we'll see, we'll see how that works. Uh, ironically, 
uh, folks don't know how to do critique. So, and that's, that's actually, that's part of the educational process too. So for the virtual group, and, and I'll review it too with the physical media, I actually put together a, a flow chart. You're probably seeing some of my IT background. <laughs> yeah. The flow chart basically with, with basically just like things like uh, if you don't care for the genre, don't critique it, right? If you don't, right. if you don't care for black and white, then don't provide feedback. If you don't care for sports shooting, then don't, you know, and then other other things like if if it's a genre that has very strict rules, like street photography, for example, a lot of street photographers won't remove stop signs. Won't you know? Don't you know? Respect those conventions, that type of thing. But it, but we will do it, and and I'll, I'll let you know how it goes once we once we figure it out. Well, you know, the thing that we have to remind ourselves of is photography is an art. Whether whether science behind mm. some of it, yeah, uh, it is an art. And mm. I know people who. Um, or like you just said, that the stop sign was there, you can't remove it. Mm-hmm. And other people think that this is an art. I guess it's it, yeah, it, it, exactly. taking the picture yeah. is my starting point, mm-hmm. you know. And, and so you can come down either way. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean one's. If you're a photojournalist, that's one thing. Like, if, right. if you're right. saying this is what happened mm-hmm. in this scene, that's yeah. one thing. But if, if you're yeah. trying to produce art, and, mm-hmm. and you know, in my mind, you. Um, have a lot of latitude there to do, exactly. to do different things. Exactly, exactly. And there's a way to respond to that. When I'm when my when I'm critiquing online, and I think the per I don't know I haven't seen the person post before, you know I'll just word it in such a way so that you know if you're if you're open to heavy manipulation, I would remove the stop sign if that's not the you know if that's yeah. not the subject and it's taking up you know it's drawing your eye to it. So there's a you know it's that it's that body language or just being nice. If you just be nice to folks and. You know, empathy, right? Empathy yeah. is the key. Exactly, yeah. and yeah. and you know, hopefully, as the club gets older and, and people start gelling more, and and mm-hmm. you uh, you have a, you know, people who want to help each other. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now, yeah. you know, as I was doing my research and on this, uh, you know, and, and maybe as the club gets bigger, some of the ones I was looking at were fairly big. You know, well over a hundred people, mm-hmm. and it, they they have to have you know some organization to it where. They may be meeting because of the size of the, the people, 100 people. You can mm-hmm. almost meet every week. Right. Um, right. You know, exactly. if, you, if you don't have, if, as you're growing, as you're smaller, weekly meetings is just going to be too much. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Because, you know, anytime, imagine anytime you meet, you don't get 100% turnout. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's the case. Yeah. What they yeah. were doing was uh, week one, they met all four weeks of a month. Week mm-hmm. one was like a competition. You brought in two photos. And they had like a little competition based on a, nice. a theme. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Week two was like an instructional thing. They, they would mm-hmm. have, this is on exposure, this is on whatever. And, mm-hmm. you know, obviously if, if you were somebody who says, um, yeah, I know everything there is to know about exposure, whether you do or not, but you just think you do, mm-hmm. um, right. you're going to skip that. But that's fine. You know, every mm-hmm. class is not for everybody. And mm-hmm. then they had other weeks where they did other things. Mm-hmm. Is that something y'all are thinking about having maybe themes for different meetings where we're going to discuss this or specific uh, topics? The 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 one that we tried at the last meeting and we're going to do is actually a pre meeting for beginners, okay. and I'm hoping I'm hoping I can get some volunteers for that. If not, I'll take it on myself. Uh, I'm not the best instructor. I probably get too technical with folks. Right. Uh, but the idea is uh, meet at the rec center an hour beforehand. Uh, in the summer, this is really easy. Spring and summer, it's really easy because it's it stays bright. You know, it stays daylight here until. So, hey, and for beginners, what we often forget is when you when you start off, you have this kit lens that just is just you know frustrating indoors a lot of times. So we'll just go outside, we'll pick some theme, for example, uh, I don't know, exposure compensation or aperture or something, and then do it do it there. I I don't know how until we are large enough. I don't know how you do that and get enough folks at a formal at a formal meeting. Right. Now we are now we are doing things weekly, and I don't know if you saw our calendar there, but we are trying to do things weekly. Uh, uh, we call it outside activities, where we go, you know, three or four people go and and do something. We've done. Uh, I mentioned the HDR. We actually did uh, steel wool. I don't know if you've seen mm-hmm. that. Yeah, we I did. Light, light steel wool on fire and spin it around. That's awesome. And and, and and different stuff like that. So those those will be pretty regular. But until we're large enough to to consider multiple meetings. We will keep it simple. So how, how are you? So how did you grow to the size you are now already? I mean, uh, meetup meetup dot com probably got us fifteen or twenty members, and it and uh, and folks trickle in there at one to two uh, uh, a month probably. The other way is I do quite a few videos with the with uh, or slideshows I should say. 
uh, with the fo- photographs that folks are taking at the at the little photo walks we have, or in the in some of the contests, uh, which we can get to a little bit too. But some of the contests are actually open where they know that they're, what they're submitting is going to end up in the video. So then I you know I upload those onto YouTube, and then I go and uh, I hate to say it spam groups that where it's allowed <laughs> to do it. For example, there's two uh, there's two groups in Rollette. Uh, that I've been on a regular basis. There's a couple, couple more in neighboring cities. I haven't got a good feel for you know how much, how much that type, of, I'll call it advertising, they'll put up with. So once I have a good feel for what's you know what's acceptable and what's there, we actually got one person out of uh, JPEG to RAW. I'd asked really? earlier if I could post the uh, the newsletter out there, and a uh, person asked to join. He's ex-military. He's actually up at I want to say he's at Fort Seal, but I'm not quite sure. So that was another awesome. way. Yep. Oh. And a couple yeah, so that's oh. that's that's how we'll do it. Yeah, I guess it's just slow steady growth um you get you get over time. It, exactly. And and it's and it's paying attention, right? Cuz there's a lot of there's a lot of ideas going on and but we need folks that can also also implement them. So right. as 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 folks come in, I try to I, it's too large now with the, with the number, but I what I try to do is quickly identify those that that want to be active, you know, those that are forthcoming. A little bit a little bit unfair to the folks that are shy. That takes a couple of months to to warm, you know, get to know people and warm up. But I try to identify anyone that's active or you know the, anyone that engages me directly. You know, I try to try to talk to them and see what they're what they're wanting to do. And I and I, and I ask them actually, where did where did you hear about us? But the majority is are those two Facebook groups that are based on Rollout Rollout Texas. Now, since, since you had the Facebook group uh, and you mentioned the YouTube channel too, there. Uh, do you, you don't need, do you not have a uh, web page devoted just to the group? Is is Facebook uh, serve the purpose of what you would need? Uh, it is doing pretty good. We actually we do want to put a. I'm gonna mute you and cough here. Sorry. Yep. Go ahead. Sorry about that. No, and I'm making you talk a lot. So anytime you yeah, want to take a drink, you go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we do want a web page. The Facebook can actually be be made to work. The problem is the feed model is just just a damn mess. <laughs> There's no hey, other way to. <laughs> when you say no, feed model, because I did see you post something about that in your in your group. Yeah. What so, what is the struggle that people are having? So I guess uh, to back up a little bit, uh, traditionally, and that sounds funny saying about the internet because it's not that old, but traditionally the way <laughs> groups have worked on the internet is a threaded model, right. which basically means you, log, you, you have a username and you have a password and you log into some website. And if you post a question about black and white photography, you know, you might check, you, not, you might choose to put that in a particular room or you might put it in a general forum and then, and then all the responses would be underneath that. And then you can you can be able to sort that chronologically or by subject or popularity. Facebook, I'm sure their algorithms are optimized to sell ads. I assume that's what it's for, but it's just it's just a mess. It, it's it's whoever posted last that gets pushed to the top. And I and I and that's a disadvantage with photographs, right? Even some of the best photographs, once you've seen them seven or eight times, if you're if you're going over checking in a group, you know the. The appeal to that photograph is kind of kind of lost because you every time you go over there, you're not seeing anything else. It, it does have a little advantage. It's popular, right? Or it's getting likes and comments. Not always good, but right. you know. So that that's the struggle. And I can't. You know, this is with this is with 20, 25 active people. I can't, I can't imagine if we, you know, if we had a hundred or two hundred active folk. Well, I think I think it'll. I think what will happen is people will become disengaged because the. You know what is a good alternative, Ron? What's since that? You, since you walked us into this, I'm going to go ahead and take the bait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a, good, a good alternative is the JPEG to Raw forums. There we go. Yeah. Which is yeah. really easy to remember. JPEG to mm-hmm. slash forums. Mm-hmm. Brought to you by JPEG to slash there forums. You go. Yeah. 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 Hey, <laughs> I, had hey. to, I had to do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I brought up the lower third earlier and I saw Tim shaking his head and I was wondering if he, <laughs> if he saw that. <laughs> I saw that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was like, "Oh, that must be thirty seconds later." That's perfect timing, Mike. <laughs> I'm wondering. I'm wondering if eventually Facebook will take those groups because some other things that are missing. I wish that would go along with what the organization of a forum does. Not only does the forum have that threaded comment, but it also has 
like you, like you, I think you said it, it has different boards basically on there. Mm-hmm. You can have mm-hmm. one devoted to this, one devoted to, you know, HDR, one devoted to baby exactly. photography, whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Um, communities and, and Google plus have the categories that you can do. So, and, yeah. and it seems, you know, of course you being an IT, you know, that things may seem simple, but they're really not. Mm-hmm. It seems like it would be simple to add categories within Facebook groups. So you can have segmented, you know, sections mm-hmm. within a, um, uh, a face one Facebook group, oh, right? Um, but I imagine, you know, they've they've had to have thought of that before, and it's just either more difficult or there's other reasons that they see that maybe I don't on why they're holding that back. Yeah, my there's I I know some folks at Facebook, but but I've got no insight. I I I have the I, I'll just say it. I think the problem is is they're owned by a technical person. Yes. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's, it's the same issue that Bill Gates had. You probably got some very smart folks that are hesitant for whatever reason to, to make those changes until, you know, until Mark, I don't know if he still gets, gets at the keyboard and still codes, but I can, those, those technology companies run into that issue. Yeah. You know, a lot of times sooner than, sooner than later, they don't, they don't go do the obvious, right? Cause there's some huge Facebook groups They it wouldn't surprise me if they aren't, they aren't the largest groups now. Yeah, you know, I mean. Oh no, I'm in. I'm in a couple of them that are in the twenty thousand member. Range. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, so and and I've opened tickets with them, <laughs> saying, <laughs> "Hey, <laughs> you know, hoping hoping someone someone has to put together a report on customer suggestions or something, and get lucky there." But yeah. Well, you know, you had mentioned before, and I and it, for everybody who's you, you know watching the show, you think we can see each other, but I I think you guys still can't see me, right, uh, Tim? Oh, no, yeah, you you came live. I, you know, I I don't even know when you came live. I actually see you now. Oh, what about you, Ron? I do I do not. <laughs> yeah, I, I I looked up a little. I was like, wait a second, when did when did Mike get in there? That's why you saw the lower third hang out right away because it popped. No, it didn't pop up behind no, me. No, no, I saw it oh. on my other screen over here. Okay, I, you know, it was, it was bright red, and I saw it scroll in. I was like. What's that? Ah, <laughs> well, unfortunately, Ron can't see me, so um, he's having to go blind here. But Ron, you had mentioned earlier something about uh, eventually holding contests or something like that. So your club mm-hmm. right now doesn't hold any contests. We uh, we I I inadvertently call them contests. Uh, right now, it's just all very friendly. It's theme shooting, and uh, I've I actually set up a fake Facebook group to try to play with voting and and how to keep it legitimate. Uh, but I haven't, I haven't solved that issue. Okay. Now, um, you know, one of the things that we all we've talked about on the show before is, is photo walks. You know, once a year, uh, Scott Kelby is probably the fam- most famous one. You know, going out there and doing a, a photo walk with people in your area. That's yep. generally the only time a lot of us get together with other people. Actually, I have not done one yet. But it, when when people get together and go and do a shoot. With a photography club, it seems like that's a good opportunity to have little mini photo walks all the time. Maybe you, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to get together and go out and shoot something. I know I tried to get my mom involved in one because mm-hmm. she wanted to go shoot some stuff at night, but mm-hmm. she was as a uh, you know as a woman, safety. she was yeah. afraid of her safety. Mm-hmm. And I said, mm-hmm. "Mom, get involved in a local photography club, mm-hmm. and it'd be like you know go out when there's ten or fifteen of you." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do y'all do many of the group shootings where you go out and do a? Group shoot on a certain subject or something like that. Yeah, I guess we've had. I guess we've had. I want to say four, maybe five, and that's just the ones where folks announce and you catch on the feed. Uh, but the ones, if I if I'm paying attention and someone inadvertently says they're doing something, I'll try to create a Facebook event and make sure everyone's aware of it. Okay. And but it, it's something that I hope that we can do basically once a week. Uh, I mean, I go out. I go out shooting several times a week. And once I get a little busy at work right now, but once I have a little structure, then then I can I can do something weekly, almost weekly, with landscape with folks. Yeah. So and then the safety and in Dallas, uh, Dallas Skyline or Dallas by Night and Reunion Tower, you know, those are great great opportunities for folks to go uh, together. I mean, I I feel pretty safe down there, but I I still want I still prefer to take someone with me. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I agree. And Dennis out in chat, by the way, Dennis, thank you very much. You used the JP to raw, uh, Amazon link whenever he was buying something. So th- thank you very much, Dennis. I know that because he told me not because I see any report that has his name on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so thank you very much, Dennis. But Dennis has a question about what about for, uh, critiquing photo groups? And, uh, I think he's talking about like maybe more like Facebook, uh, critiquing photo groups. And I, I've actually known, uh, a, a group here. There's a group here, 
in Georgia. It's it's um, Scott Green, who's been on the show before, runs it, and it's the photographers of Georgia. I can't remember the exact name, but uh, something like that. And they they want it to be more professionals. I, I don't know how strict he is about that, but more professionals. Mm-hmm. And I think things got a little bit – when you start doing critiques, and we talked oh. about this earlier, you have people who think, look, you're not critiquing well enough. You're being too soft on the person. Mm-hmm. Don't right. tell them it looks great if it's not doesn't look great. And then you have other people saying you're being too hard. You're critiquing mm-hmm. too much. So somebody, one of those guys created a group that is specific to critiques. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, from what I saw of it, it went downhill fast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, too, so too soft or too too too, too hard. Too it was a lot of people just beating each other up. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and I don't know how co- constructive it was. If you're beating each other up, and it's actually constructive, and you're getting better, that's mm-hmm. one thing. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know, sometimes the mom or dad who has this photo of their kid and they think it's wonderful and it really isn't, mm-hmm. you know, just because your kid's in it doesn't mean it's great. Mm-hmm. They need a little bit of um of um you know, tr- you know tough love, right? But. <laughs> You know, uh, you don't need it all the time. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know what y'all's thought is, but my thought, Dennis, is join a group like Facebook, uh, like uh, J. Peter Raw's Facebook group. And while it's not a critique group, that's not its purpose, you can ask for critique and you'll get some there. Mm-hmm. So I, I, personally, I don't like groups that are specific to critiquing. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. all they do. Yeah, the uh, the the hard part with, I think it's it's a tough, it's tough it's tough regardless if you have a physical club or a virtual club. I think, I think the challenge in both cases is you, you just, you just have to put yourself out there and I've gotten much better about that. I joined a Google plus group and I'm going to, I can't think of its name. Maybe it'll come to me in here in a minute. And basically what they do is they critique with one word up or down. They, they use the word save or delete. And if you, if you get 10 yeah. saves, then that means you get to go into the album and they have some pretty pretty well known. I'll call them rock stars. Not all of them make. I think a lot of them make more money off their YouTube ads than they do taking pictures. But they do good photography, and they're known for photography. So you're getting exposure. You know, you're getting exposure to some pretty well known names. But when I started that, that just that seems so. I mean, I left the group for a bit, right? I got yeah. I got ten deletes right in a row. Now, when I look back at that picture, <laughs> it was probably justified. Right? <laughs> that is but, tough. You know, it just it just came across as very tough. Now you know if 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 someone's mean to me or says something mean to me, I you know I, I might say something back to them. I might tease them a little bit or, or call them a troll or something. But otherwise, you, so <laughs> from the recipient side of it, you have to be you just have to be very open. I think, but I, I didn't quite close that point. My point was is that if you if you don't get to know the person, you, what do you do with the critique, right? If uh, if you don't know their style of photography, if you don't know where they're coming from, you know, sure, there's some basics. If 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 I cropped off someone's finger in a portrait studio portrait shot, yeah, that's probably sloppy and that's obvious critique. But you know, if you're if you're really pushing the edges, you know, pushing your bounds and, and trying to get better, it's 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 just a tough tough thing to solve. You know, I generally like to shoot alone. I like to go out, and when I'm going to shoot, I like to be alone because you know, several reasons. One is I want to go at my pace. Yes. I don't want, I also have, I'm self conscious about somebody saying, you're an idiot. Why are you pointing your camera over there? Obviously, the place you need to point is over here. Mm-hmm. And I don't want people in, you know, <laughs> in live feed saying, Mike, you're an idiot. I want to, mm-hmm. I want to act like I'm in, I mean to point it over that way. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, doing that on purpose. So, so with that, but the other side of it is, and you know, when I've gone out um, shooting with, uh, I think of my times I went with my mom, you know, we both have a different eye. And I think I'm, mm-hmm. I'm more technical. I know the camera better and I can help her with, with those kind of things where she may have a more creative eye than me. Mm-hmm. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. I, I see what, you know, why you went over in that direction. So I imagine mm-hmm. in, a, in a photo group when you're going out and doing that kind of stuff, while there's some of that, I want to shoot alone. Mm-hmm. There's also that benefit you're getting from seeing other people do what they do mm-hmm. and, um, mm-hmm. and, you know, and interacting with them and asking them questions. And then, help, and then sharing your knowledge with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can I can think of a couple of examples uh, I've seen already. Uh, actually, during the um, steel wool photography uh, session, we went out and took. Now you're thinking long exposure. Uh, you know, you're you're going to burn the you're going to burn the image onto the camera sensor. 
And I took my I took my flash with me. And one of the people asked me, "Well, why would you why would you bring your flash out here?" And I said, "Well, just I'm just going to do some field flash when I take pictures of us doing that." And you know, it was it was it, it helped the person along as to, as to what that was used for. So they really hadn't been exposed to that. And then that same subject came up in another one. I believe it was a high, high definition. The same thing is. Uh, one, why are you using flash, and, and why are you leaving long exposures on people, right? I was trying to get folks standing in the sunset, and they would move, and so, would, you know, I was trying to be artsy. It didn't turn out that well, but, you know, show them the back of the camera looks good, so you're going to, you're just going to be exposed to things that you wouldn't, you wouldn't consider. Yeah, and Dennis has another question along mm-hmm. this critique line, too, and he says, um, I think you're talking about critique groups, talking about one more like professional one, like TWIP, which mm-hmm. I think is This Week in Photography with Frederick Van Johnson. Mm-hmm. But I think he's talking about, in this case, Chris, I'm not familiar with him, that he'll do uh, $39 for 15 minutes, like a podcast thing. I imagine what, mm-hmm. maybe he's showing your photos and critiquing them, or I don't know if he's doing it live with you there. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I have no idea what Dennis's level of, of skill level is, where he's at in his photography journey. Um, but personally, I would... I would only want to do that if one, if I, if I thought that the person had value they can give me, that was going to be worth $39 mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I'd want to be further along in my, uh, you know, photography, uh, journey. I, if I'm at the beginning, mm-hmm. you know, a group that I could join on Facebook may give me some ideas that I can, I can mm-hmm. uh, start moving along, uh, along that line and then get to a point where the group is not helping me enough, um, with this stuff. I need some th- something mm-hmm. else and mm-hmm. then go to somewhere like that. Otherwise you may just be giving Chris $39. Whoever Chris is. Right. Well, and what I would do is I would go listen to, I would go, I would ask Chris to listen to one of his critiques, which might put him in an awkward position, but obviously he needs to answer that at some point. But what kind of advice he's given, uh, you, you have to be able to understand what the person is telling you and you have to, and you have to be willing to go, uh, research it. I remember the first time someone told me I wasn't following the rule of thirds, you know, and I was like, what, what the hell are they talking about? Yeah. You know, and I, I had to go research, right. Cause I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know the feedback I was getting. There's also an alternative. Improved photography also just opened a paid, um, uh, paid critique, right. and it actually has uh, tiered pricing. And they actually suggest you with the basic pricing. The tier, uh, the low one. I want to say it's thirty nine dollars, thirty nine, fifty nine, and eighty nine, or something like that. And with the top option actually giving you two photographers. Okay. Uh, that one I, I'm actually considering myself because I respect, especially the landscape, uh, photographer that's, that's in that group, which his name is failing me currently. Uh, I respect his work. So for my landscape, I would love to, to, you know, run that back And it. And it also gives back to them. I mean, I've learned so much from, from improved photography for free that it's also a good way for me to give back to that, right. you know, to the effort. There's also if you you know if you really want to go even further if you want to go to the next step we've talked about this a number of times on the show there's also the uh, Arcanum you know we've we've had a number of guests on the show who are masters over at the Arcanum A.D. Mm-hmm. Wheeler um, mm-hmm. Ron Clifford and mm-hmm. I know I'm leaving somebody out sorry but mm-hmm. we've had we've had a number of them I thought there was three so now I've forgotten the third one who are mm-hmm. masters over there and that's a it, it does it's a little bit costlier I think it's um, mm-hmm. eighty to ninety bucks a month. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a little bit more intense than your, you know, where some of these ones, the one you're talking about on TWIP and probably the one you're talking about mm-hmm. on improved photography, it's a mm-hmm. one shot deal. Uh, mm-hmm. and imagine you run your photos through that, they critique them and then you're mm-hmm. going to do it. You do it again. It's mm-hmm. an, another fee, right? Exactly. Yeah. That, well, improve is, I'm not sure about TWIP. Yeah. Uh, and it sounds like that's the way it is with TWIP too. Mm-hmm. So, and it sounds like several of these groups are starting to see that as a, um, you know, a way to make money. There's, there's, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you got knowledgeable people who can give that knowledge to other people. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're a photographer with a, with a photo club, like we've been talking about, mm-hmm. you may be able to get some of that stuff for free. Yeah, that would, yeah, that, interact. that would be a major advantage. And you would know the, you would know the person, ideally you would know the person's uh, background and where they're coming from. Cause you can just ask, right? How, you know, you can, if, if it's somebody, you know, or trust, you can just say, well, how long, how long did it take you to grasp that? Cause with the critique, you don't know if someone's just telling you, you need to do that better. Well, okay. Is that something that they just memorized and did, or did it take them? you know, years to execute that. Uh, I'll I'll give an example. Uh, the, I've, I've had, I've had two runs with photography. I got into it pretty seriously when the rebel first came out and then I got away from it and I got back into it. But when I first got into it, 
I, I just don't have an eye for composition. And then someone, it was a, it was a critique, but I think it was DP review or it was something before Google plus and, and Facebook, you know, took over the, took over the group scene. But, uh, I remember someone just giving me the tricks of isolating, you know, use depth of field and isolate and you, and you, you know, you don't have, you don't have near as many compos, composite, comp, Positional issues. Am I saying right. <laughs> Southern tongue is coming out a little bit. Uh, <laughs> can't say two words in a row. Uh, so, but but uh, unfortunately, I over rely on that now. So I'm actually practicing that. But that that's the kind of critique or the kind of feedback that you can get in a critique is, hey, if you're struggling, I was struggling with composition. Hey, if you'll just start isolating, get a little closer to the subject, you know, get get clutter out of the background and do that. And it's just hard to. I guess you might read that in a book or you might hear that on a podcast, but I, I think that just feedback that you get, you can go execute on. Right. But you, and as a recipient though, and that's what I've told folks, you really need to, you need, if we, especially these hard hitting guys that are very good at photography, you really need to go execute it and bring them back something and show that you got it. Right. Cause I think, I think people that are especially doing it for a free critique and, and if you don't see the person at least trying or doing better, you, you might get a feeling they're, they're ignoring you. And, and maybe they are, but they just need to be forthcoming. Yeah, the, we, we've had some of the, it's it's been a while, but we had some of that in the Facebook group too, where you would you would tell somebody something. You know, you appreciate the fact that somebody is asking for help. Mm-hmm. You you offer the help, and then it's it it appears that they're not listening at all. They're not they're not trying mm-hmm. any of it. Mm-hmm. Now you know sometimes you got to step back and say you know maybe they're a little bit slower mm-hmm. at getting this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, there's hey if you if you wanted me to become uh, an engineer, I'm gonna be real slow mm-hmm. at getting that. Right. <laughs> you know, but yeah. you know, if you want me to be an accountant, which is what I am, I'll, I'll catch you on to those things really fast. Right. Uh, so we have to remember that everybody learns at the same pace. Mm-hmm. But you mm-hmm. do, like you said, you want to see that they're making an effort, they're they're improving and, and uh, mm-hmm. moving mm-hmm. along. Uh, so yeah. I, I do have a couple more questions, and I can't believe sure. we're, I got I got some things to go on to talk about after this, and we're already uh-huh. got I only got like ten minutes left in the hour. But the mm-hmm. hour is a. Um, Self-imposed thing. We can go past that if we need to. Okay. I just don't want to abuse you with your time. No, that's it's all good. Um. So, uh, I'm trying to find my my question here. Oh, so one of the things you know, one of the guys that um was was in our Facebook group that I know here locally, they he, they had a a small little club. I don't remember if it's a club or just like a, a a lesson that they were teaching each other. And they did at the end of it, they did an exhibit. Have you ever guys ever thought about maybe holding an exhibit like uh, somewhere we had the, the pictures actually printed up on a wall, maybe even have the open to the public where they can come in and buy something? So what I would actually like to do would be a, like a two day and I don't want to call it a workshop, but a two day event Yeah, where we could actually one day we could either learn about photography or talk about photography and the second day where we'd actually show the work. Uh, there is actually our neighboring city has a art league. And so I would like to copy their model in doing that. Okay. Uh, unfortunately we don't, we're not quite there on, uh, we don't call them officers. We've been calling folks coordinators. We don't have enough folks, uh, up to speed on the coordinating yet to pull off something, uh, that large, uh, I, I think I think once we prove ourselves with the civic center, uh, we'll you know we'll be able to get that kind of facility for longer, or or we could rent something as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, you know that's the thing is is starting one. If you're starting from mm-hmm. zero, you, it's that those first that first time whatever it takes to get up mm-hmm. to a certain what is that called critical mass? That's where right. all right now I'm, now things are starting to chug along because I got a certain mm-hmm. size, mm-hmm. and then of course eventually you you have all new problems with uh, mm-hmm. now I'm too big and I need to organize. <laughs> yeah. Um, but along those lines, if I'm someone who's either thinking about starting one in my city mm-hmm. or maybe wanting to find out if there is already one in my city, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How, do, how would I go about finding out first if there's one in my city? What's the best way to find out a photography club near you? I, I would do it. I would do two things. I would get on meetup.com and I would search your area for the club and then I would message the people that are running those to ask if they're really a club or are they just a resource pool to hire models and that type of thing. Right. The other thing I would do is I would find your local uh, community Facebook groups. Uh, I would look for both the formal one. Usually the city will have a Facebook page. I would ask there and I, then I would also ask the Facebook group. The informal, usually they'll call it unofficial or or something along those lines. It'll be obvious that the, the city doesn't sponsor and then ask there if there's a, a photography group. And then, of course, just old-fashioned uh, – 
Google Google dot com and see yeah. see if you get any hits there. Uh, I guess the the important thing would be to uh, get a, get a feel for just the ones that are there. If that's if that's really a the the problem I had is that they're really not clubs. Mm-hmm. Right? There's uh, I know of two in Dallas Fort Worth, and I don't I don't know what our total population is now three or three or four million people I think maybe more, but you know there's there's two that are, that seem semi active in the whole metroplex. When you say resource pools, uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, some of them, uh, the, for example, some of them are photographers that have a studio. So they'll say, hey, we're going to have a session in, in two weeks and we're going to be shooting a model. $40. A, uh, oh, pay us okay. $40 and you get the re- – you know, and it's a good deal if you're looking to uh, – it's a good deal to practice. I, I know folks build their portfolios, but I've, I've pointed out to a couple of folks that use those, hey, you have the same pictures that <laughs> – <laughs> to, two other professionals do in the area, you know, looks to be the same picture, but you know, it's, it's good for that. So, and some of them will do, uh, rent equipment. Uh, you know, uh, I haven't seen actually, was it Atlanta? Is that where Zach Arias is from? Yep. Yep. He's from here. I think, I think in Atlanta, I saw one where they were doing, um, uh, concept shoots. So, you know, if you try to do a commercial shoot, you know, you can run into 10 or $15,000 worth of equipment, you know, but if you pull together, you know, a hundred photographers willing to spend fifty dollars on it, then you you might be able to pull together a concept shoot. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're wanting to get, I call it project management, showing that IT background again. But whatever that's called, the you know the the coordination piece of of a of a commercial shoot, because because I've never done one, but I'm sure the the work isn't pulling the trigger, isn't hitting the shutter. It's it's you know yeah. managing a bunch of people and a bunch of moving pieces. All right, so let me ask this uh, last question as we start to wrap this up. Mm-hmm. Is um, all right, my, and hopefully my wife is not listening. But let's say I decided, look, there's no photography club in mm-hmm. my city. You know, I live mm-hmm. in the suburbs of Atlanta. I'm mm-hmm. sure there's some big ones in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's say I want one here in my suburban city. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start my own. Mm-hmm. What what kind of commitment am I looking at as far as you know how much time am I going to spend on this? Um, and I guess first thing I got to find is a meeting place because mm-hmm. I don't want all these people coming to my house. Right, right. So uh, I'll answer the latter question first. So I started – actually, I started the meetups in uh, a bar and grill. I, I mentioned earlier I shoot quite a bit of music, and there's a local business called Hang Time, and they recognize me. And so I just called them up and said, hey, I'd like to have a photography meeting. They said, come on. The issue with a uh, – with the bar and grill is, of course, it's loud, and I think our second meeting, there was actually a basketball game going on, so the locals didn't care to be quiet to let us talk about photography. They they preferred seeing Texas beat OU or something. And, and they, But they didn't beat you up, so at least... <laughs> but they didn't beat us up, yes, yes. <laughs> didn't say, bunch of nerds, get out of here. <laughs> no, 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 it was, it was all very pleasant. Uh, and, and, and at that point, someone said, hey, I know someone at the Civic Center, and so we did that. So I think, I think the meeting place can address itself. You meet at a, I guess a bar and grill, you have to be, if you, if you have a lot of teenagers, it might not be the best event here in, here in Texas. I, there's some rules about it. They can go, you know, they're serving food during the day. They can go in there. So that might not be the best depending on Atlanta's uh, load, but there's places like that that you can get. I've, I've heard folks talk about for computer clubs, they'll rent a church for 10 or $15 an hour or something like that as well. You know, I think we or, have a library here that yeah, has meeting rooms that we could do that. Like that. Yeah, yeah. So something like that. Now, as far as time, I haven't spent a whole lot of time the last two weeks, but generally I would say I spend eight, eight to 16 hours a week on it mm. when I was getting it started. But I was also doing a newsletter and all the videos, right? right. Now, some of that, some of that is being handed off as, as other folks get up to speed, uh, and I'm also I also love automation. So once I've done something once or twice, uh, I tend to automate everything that that doesn't have to be you know that's not an artistic decision. Right. So I think starting off, you're going to first month you'll you'll spend you'll spend a you know the equivalent of a day a week on it probably to if you're wanting to get it up to speed. And of course, like everything else, you can you can slice it you can slice it down to as much time as you want and then just don't don't ramp up as quick but then you're going to have the issue of keeping people's attention right people keep and, enga- and engaged right and, engaged. And, I, and i guess the struggle also is uh, when you first start off is um if you st- let's say for me um, mm-hmm. and I, you know i'm going to think it's a little bit negative here but if i start mm-hmm. off and everybody who comes in is a pure beginner 
Mm -hmm. And they're looking for Mike to teach them how to not be a pure beginner. Mm -hmm. And I got, Mm -hmm. you know, 10 of those. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, this is not worth it. You know, so, so, Mm -hmm. you know, you got to make, I would hope that I could get um, Mm -hmm. a good mix at the beginning Mm -hmm. and get Mm -hmm. people that can, can, can help. Maybe they can Mm -hmm. teach me and, and uh, also people that we can Mm -hmm. teach and share. Cause Mm -hmm. I think if you got too heavily loaded, if you Mm -hmm. all, all you did was have people come in who are pros, Mm -hmm. they might say, ah, this is too boring. This is not for me. I'm out. Right. Uh, Yeah. 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 I think, and I think that's the reason it's going to take a lot of time is because the easiest way to avoid that is activities, right? Because if you take something, if you take something, that, just take something that's popular in Atlanta, uh, is it Turner? See, is that my, Turner field? Seeing, okay. Yeah. I don't know if you can photograph that or not, but say you can, you can, you know, that, that's a, that's of interest to all level of photographers, right? The, the beginner might go along just to see folks shoot, uh, intermediate might want to try something and professional if they shoot if they shoot portraits all day they they might want to go shoot something different so I, and and that's generally how we're dealing with it we are going to have some sessions but it's it needs to be everybody's life needs to stay balanced it doesn't need to it doesn't need to become a a, a job you know because it will i i think i think that's the reason you don't see a lot of photo clubs a lot of co- computer clubs is, a, is the same thing you don't you don't see nearly as many of them around because the, the, it can become you know, it could become a job. I feel like this podcast has become a, jo- <laughs> yeah, a job yeah. that it's, that the reverse. What is the reverse of pays money? That's yeah, what, yeah. That's yeah, what this yeah. this podcast it's has become. Time and money. Well, uh, Ron, we're at the end of the hour, and I have some other things we're going to go over. And I want you to hang out with us as we go over those because I want your opinion on them. But uh, two things for you: what is what's next for Ron? What is you know? You talked about you being uh, somebody who eventually someday wants to be a full-time photographer, but right now you and your wife run a photography business mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. in addition to your day job. What mm-hmm. is, what's coming up for Ron? Anything that we should be watching uh, for? Yeah, I think, uh, I think we want to be in the second in, in Dallas, there's really four tiers of wedding photographers. Uh, we're not quite uh, uh, what's the, it's not a pleasant term that folks use for that. There's a term for it. Shoot and burn. Yeah, we do, we do do uh, albums and, uh, and prints and that type of stuff, but but technically we're in the fourth tier. So w- I think realistically we can get up into the second tier of that yeah. photography, which is from a practical matter is is what's needed to make a living as well. So uh, that's what we're focusing on, both from a business perspective and a uh, photographic perspective. Uh, so a lot of focus on lighting, uh, studio lighting, flash that type of thing. So that's that's really what we're going to focus on. Okay. And if somebody wants to find out more about you, Ron, what's the, what's the best way to keep uh, track on what Ron's doing and find out more about Ron? Uh, I guess the easiest way is uh, my website, and it'll actually take you to the social media site. It's uh, www.rons-photo.com. Okay. And we'll have the link in the show notes. And you're saying that on that page there's a link to your photography club's uh, Facebook page? It's actually a link to my individual page, but okay. – uh, they can message me, and I can, I can anyone that's interested, I can invite them, and I also give you the link to the uh, Facebook group. Okay, what, do you want do you want us to put that in the show notes too? Sure, then? sure, okay. yeah, that, that's fine. Yeah, we'll put that there, and uh, looks like Tim put your your website in the in the chat, but we'll have all that in the in the show notes if anybody wants to go there. Well, and yep. I think you're in the show notes already. Uh, yep, thank you, Tim. And I think I had actually, um, nope, I didn't. I had that messed up. So we get that. I had the wrong lower third uh, thing there. How'd that happen? Um, so we'll have the right thing in the show notes. Okay, so if you'll hang out with us a little bit, we have a few closing things. And then actually I want to go over something before we do the closing stuff. So in our Facebook group, you know, we have a Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash group slash JPEGDRAW. And we have a few others, but that's the main one. And we have a monthly photo challenge, except for December, um, that we, you know, we do a different theme each month. And Ron, you're a member of that group, I believe. I know mm-hmm. Tim, yes, uh, Tim, I think you are. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things we've been, so as we've been doing this, I think we've been up to like week, uh, month 36 or something like that. We've been doing this for a while. And it's getting a little bit harder for people to come up with, with themes that will attract a wide range of people. So we're getting into some things like Broken, and, and I think we're doing, uh, we've done some others that are documentary that are a little bit harder. Because you know, if you think about ideas, it's endless. Mm-hmm. But 
you know, there's ones that are more popular than others. The application of it. Yeah. yeah so we're, we're right now we're having a little bit less participation than we've had before. So before, mm-hmm. so one of the things we're thinking about doing is doing some kind of alternation where one month is a challenge with a theme. One month is an open, uh, uh, more of a contest where whatever your best photo of the month that you want to submit uh, and doing, doing it that way. So that would maybe get a little more people involved and give us a little more time to, to come up with different themes and get people doing it that way. Think about doing that. We think we're going to start that with the April Facebook challenge, uh, Facebook group, where the March one is eyes is the theme. So the April one is probably going to be an open one where you just whatever you take in April that you think is your best, you submit mm-hmm. that one. And then we'll do that. The winner, of course, doesn't want to receive any money except for the December contest. The winner just gets um, the knowledge of being a winner. <laughs> recognition. <laughs> the recognition of being a winner and also gets to be the cover photo for the Facebook group for the month. The other thing is, and I want you, you guys' opinions, and I'm probably going to put a poll out there tonight or tomorrow, is on the editing challenge. So the, we do an editing challenge every two weeks. We've had you know 50 or 60 images that have been submitted to us some of them by Nikki, who's an uh, admin for the group, some by Gina, who's an admin, some by me, and some by other people, uh, who's you know, Debbie Henry and A.D. Willer and some others that have submitted some. And uh, we pick one, and that's the edit, the, the photo that we're going to edit for the next week. And then there's like a week that we do a, um, a review and pick a winner. And so I've been debating back and forth, and I want y'all's opinion on this, on whether we should just scrap the whole voting for a winner thing and just say – Look, here's an image you can edit for the for the week. Um, you know, everybody edit. We'll put everybody in the photo uh, Facebook album, and we can all look at it. But there's not going to be a winner announced. On the one hand, I can see some people saying, um, "I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I don't want to enter a, a challenge where there's not going to be a winner because what's the point?" Mm-hmm. And then other people saying, "I don't want to enter it because I know I'm not going to win, and I don't want to lose every every other week." Uh, and if you just let me do this without picking a winner, then I would be more willing to participate. Mm-hmm. With Tim, uh, Ron, what's y'all's thoughts? Let's start with you, Tim. Say it again, Mike. I missed that. The whole thing? <laughs> yeah, I, the, the last part of it. I must have been daydreaming for some. Go to Ron for a second. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking I'm talking too long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was looking at the show notes for a second and daydreams right through that. All right. <laughs> let me let me give you a, a oh, little, oh. real brief thing here, Tim. Um, the editing challenge. Right. The one that I've really been very lackadaisical is, and that's putting it as a light word. <laughs> well, you're going to have to narrow that down. <laughs> but no, the editing challenge that we do every two weeks, uh, should we continue having a vote and a winner? Or should we just have, here's the edit, the photo to edit this week, and everybody have fun, but there's no winner announced? I almost would prefer not to have a winner. I, 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 I mean, we have the monthly uh, photo challenge ready where we have the winner, and uh, you get the recognition from that. I, I, I mean, I've never submitted a picture, and you know what? I go back to what we talked about very early on with uh, you have people that are very easy to critique a photo, but don't want to have their work critiqued. And, and I, I don't know if I even want my work critiqued, but uh, I, I don't know if I need to have a winner out of it and what what's the best uh, one of it, because it is very subjective. Yep. I, I know what I look at and and how I view a picture. And, and I just see like uh, what was picked as the winner for last month's photo challenge. And it wasn't the one that I thought would win. So it's. It's very subjective at that point. So for the, and, and right in this case, I'm only talking about the editing challenge. Would you be more willing to participate if there was no winner uh, announcement? Was just uh, have fun with this, or would you be less willing to participate? Um, I don't think it would matter one way or the other. Oh, okay, Ron. Yeah, I, I, oh. I can go either way. Be honest with you on that. Okay, Ron. What's your thoughts? I I think with the editing, I I, th- I think that I assume the winner. I assume you'll get more participation. I think people disconnect a little bit from the image when it's not theirs. And I think they're a little bit more open to being competitive on it. Okay. Uh, with the, with the pictures though, I, I think it's going to depend on your makeup of your, of your group. Uh, I think it, it'll literally come down to, uh, folks that want to be competitive, that do things that enter contest with, with the hopes of winning or a chance or, or just for the spirit of, of competitiveness. Versus those that will do it. Now, I, I will do both. If, if I'm paying attention, I, I will do either type of contest. Uh, if you're out of your league, though, right, I yeah. see some contests where, you know, if you, 
if I, I go over to 500 P, uh, PX and see some of those groups, yeah. I mean, I am just so out of my league there that I, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't, it wouldn't matter either way. I probably wouldn't submit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the some. one thing for the photo contest or challenge is you, you, we're going to have to pick a winner because we put the, at, at the top of the picture at the top, right. top of the group. So we have to on that one. I'm yeah. going to open this up to the, to the group on the editing challenge and let the group uh, vote on that. And hopefully yeah. it's, it's dramatically one way or the other. Cause if it's like split down, even then hey, you're in trouble, just <laughs> no point in doing <laughs> exactly. it. Well, and, and unfortunately you're, you're only voting the ones that, that show up to vote. So it's True. a very representative. Uh, it, it would be interesting. And I've given it some thought and I can't figure out is if you could, if you could make the contest applicable to where the photographer is on their journey. And I've not been able to figure that out. If you could somehow yeah. box in, Hey, this is for beginners. And it should be a skill set, not a, you know, not a, uh, some folks get, become very good photographers in three years. You know, some folks need 10 years, but if, if there would be some way to box that in, I think you could get more participation. All right. Speaking of beginners, that brings me to the last subject I had, and then we'll do the closing. And that is Mike, me, is, uh, been, uh, I've been asked to do a photography one-on-one class at work. We have what we call lunch and learn. It's, it's, I think it's an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Maybe they give you a little bit extra because you're doing the learning. But mm -hmm. every so often we do these lunch and learn things. So in May, early May, I think it's like the very first week in May. So i got to be done with whatever I'm going to do here in April. But in early, in early May, I'm going to hold a Photography 101 class. And at first I start thinking, all right, I'll teach about white balance. I'll teach about ISO and noise. I'll teach about all this. And I go, too far, too far advanced. Uh, They're saying 101, Mike. <laughs> exactly. So I start thinking, that is way too advanced. I know mm -hmm. people are going to be saying, why is, why is my photo blurry or that kind of thing? So, mm -hmm. it, well, I, okay, actually, I know the first question people are going to say, or one of the first questions. Mm -hmm. What's the best camera I should get? I, I was just going to say, it's going to be about which camera should I get. That's easy. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on, Ron, but I don't want to spend more than $200. Ooh, Sony. <laughs> oh, oh, the Sony I'm looking at is 1600 <laughs> Yeah. So that's one. The second one is going to be, what is the best photo, photo editing software, and I don't want to spend anything on it? Lightroom. <laughs> that's not free. Oh, oh well. <laughs> so I, my, well, my thinking there, so I, I'll tell you what my thinking is, and you guys can add to it. And everybody who's listening to this, can email me at um, here. I think I have a lower third for this. Hold on. Look at that podcast at jbaderaw.com. Email me at, at that and give me your suggestions on what you think I should uh, include in whatever I go to do this. Let me pull that back up. What I should include when I go to do this, uh, this class, you know, should I, what, what are you, what is your suggestion for, the best software. Um, I know some people said GIMP. I, when I look at GIMP, it's, it's too complicated for the for much. these beginners. Yeah. So yeah. I'm thinking something like like a Lightroom. You may have to pin, spend a little bit, or a Photoshop Elements. But if you have something that is is fairly cheap or free as an idea, you know, send it to podcast at jpeterraw dot com. I'd love to hear what you have have going on there. Or you can also uh, send me a tweet at at jpeterraw. See, I, I would think uh, really what you want to discuss there is is composition of a photo or like you said, why is my picture uh, blurry? Uh, I, whenever I see my sister-in-law's take a picture, I hand somebody my camera, you always see them go like this. I'm like, no, squeeze the trigger, just press the button down because that little bit blurs the picture and people don't realize it. It's mm -hmm. the small little things. Uh, when you start getting to the camera, you know, any camera is good. It really is. Whatever camera you're going to use, you're going to get, you can take a good picture, but it's how you set up the picture. And that's where I would try to start with people. Mm -hmm. Get them away from what they think it is and get to them what it really should be. Uh, I, and a, a person in our Facebook group, and I'm sorry, I don't have it pulled up now, so I can't remember your name. Um, I should have had that ready, but he brought up, there's a site, um, DSR simulator or something like that, where you can pull up this thing and you can do the different settings and it will show you how the, the image is blurry and everything like that. I may leave them with something like that, but, uh, it may be my first time. I might try hooking up my, my camera to a laptop that's running Lightroom to tether, and do tethering. tethering. And oh, I'm, I'm going to have big screens behind me. So I may, I may be able to do my first tethering thing. So Better if, try it before then. No, no, no. <laughs> like like every, you know, Tim, Tim, like everything, you try it 
live for the first time. Try it live the first time. Right, live for the first time. What can go wrong? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, no. So, uh, any any thoughts? You know, Tim, you had some great suggestions, Ron. Uh, I would, I would, maybe I would change the scope a little bit to try to mitigate those or try to remove those questions. You know, maybe box it in with uh, you're here to talk about getting the getting the best pictures you can with the with your phone or with the camera you have. Uh, it kind of depends on the group. Uh, and, uh, you know, the way B&H handles it is keep your questions till the end. You might <laughs> you might try that. But I, I, I think composition would be good. Uh, you know, understanding, you know, how to hold the camera, understanding, you know, maybe social media, understanding that, uh, that you know, Facebook doesn't present your picture in the best light or your video. And, you know, maybe tell them about, a little bit about YouTube and some of the other photography sites. Uh, doing that, and uh, ca- I don't know how you get into camera usage though, because they're know, so it's so varied, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I think you know, hold the camera steady. You know, if it's if it's dark inside, go outside. <laughs> you know, it's you know. Yeah, well, you know, another thing I can uh, see people saying is, how do I uh, stop getting red eye? Mm-hmm. And, you know, yeah. and if you're if you're shooting on a mm-hmm. on a cell phone or you're shooting on a uh, you know, what is a point and shoot or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's, that's going to, I don't know how do you get rid of red eye because you can't right, right. get you can't get that flash away from the lens. Mm-hmm. Well, probably no. the other thing is just read the manual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure that's going to be the other question, Tim. Is what is this this mode this this yeah. little this little guy who's manual. doing like that? What does that mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why is there a mountain? Yeah, yeah. why is there yeah. a mountain? Why is there a flower? Yeah. yeah, Well, and and one thing that took me the longest to get is yeah, take another picture, right? You know, you, I tell, I'll tell folks, hey, turn your flash on. Yeah, but I don't like the way the flash looks. Yeah, but you, ultimately you're documenting your family, right? Take a picture with the flash, take one without it. Yeah, get closer, move up, you know, come, come home with options. Don't take, you know, so many folks just take the one picture because everybody's giving them a hard time about let's go, you know, let's hurry, you know, but just uh, I think. Great if, point. If, you know, move just around and get, get different options, angles. Get different angles, get different shots, turn your flash on, turn your flash off. Uh, you know, get people out in the light. So many people try to do things in, inside, and especially even if they got an SLR and they got a kit lens, some of that stuff is just very, very especially if they don't have it set up right. You know, it'll it'll go down to a fifteenth of a second, and why are my pictures mm-hmm. blurred? You know, so one of the things I'm hoping to, if I can get this tethering thing to work, one of the things I I want to demonstrate is that one of the, one of the first things I tell people is to get down to your subject level. You know, mm-hmm. if you're shooting your two year old and mm-hmm. you're shooting it from your you know, five or six foot height, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's one thing. So that, that would be an easy thing to demonstrate. Mm-hmm. They'll be sitting down. I can walk up to them, take a shot down like that, mm-hmm. see that pop up, get back down to their level, take another shot and say, which one is better? Better, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I and think that, the composition you can you can demonstrate yeah. quickly. All right, so, you know, again, if you anybody has any any thoughts on that, uh, Tim, uh, Ron, thank you. That took some great thoughts. And some great ones have already been given to me out in the Facebook group, including Scott Green is going to send me his beginner's guide that he already uses. So, woohoo. Um, but if you have any thoughts, send it to me at podcast at jpegraw.com. This, this show, you can get this show on Stitcher, Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and other places that I can't think of right now on the TiVo. <laughs> well, no, that's the audio side. Oh, all those places were audio. Uh, if you want to get the video, you can get the video on our website, iTunes, T, uh, YouTube, and TiVo, like Tim mentioned. So you can get it from all those different places. Don't uh, if you're not a member of a Facebook group, come out and join us at facebookcom slash jbakeraw We'd love to have you out there. If you're not interested in joining a Facebook group. We also have a Google Plus community that is even deader than our uh, <laughs> forums. It's just I don't spend any time in there. But so instead, come out to our forums. We'd love to have you in the forums, jpegderall.com slash forums. Uh, we're getting a little bit more activity out there, Tim. You know, I post stuff out there. I had somebody, I had, when we brought it where, over where, from. Where is that? jpegderall.com slash forums. <laughs> There's such a place? I, there is. I've been there in a long it is a, I, think, I think I'm a member. It is a. <laughs> You are a member, and it is a beautiful forum. I love, I love that forum uh, for things I use it for that no one else gets to see, but I like it. So we'd love to have you come out there. It's easy to join. You can join through – you can join outright by creating an account, or you can join by using your Twitter, Google+, or Facebook account by doing it that way if you'd rather do it that, that way. Uh, it, you know, and if you're not wanting to be a member of any of those things, but you still like to participate in our 
in our Facebook, uh, our photo challenge or, or editing challenge, you can't, the editing challenge, you got to go download the original file from our, our forums, but you don't have to be a member. You can download it from there without being a member. If you want to, and then the way to submit that stuff back, if you don't want to be a member of any of those groups, on our website, there's a link where you can submit the photo, photo challenge or submit the editing challenge. You can do it right there from the face, from the, the group. Uh, if you're going to buy on Amazon, if you're going to go to Amazon, don't forget to use our Amazon link, jpedderaw.com slash Amazon, and, or our Topaz Labs link if you're going to be buying something from Topaz Labs, which is jpeg rawcom slash Topaz Labs. When you do JPEG, everybody knows when you do JPEG, it's J-P-E-G to raw, the number, the number two raw, right? That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, J-P-E-G, the number two. At uh, raw.com. Yeah. Not T O O? No. I own, I actually own that, but I don't know what it would do if you try to do that. Uh, and also, you know, we're still using the, the music from Jeff Troutman uh, that, that was given to us by Aaron uh, Shut. So thank you guys for letting us use that that um, audio. It's That music has been great at the beginning and end of the show. Uh, we'd love to have you join the Facebook group, as I mentioned. Or you know, come out and join the YouTube channel. That's a, YouTube is probably the first place that the, the show is produced. So come out there and do one of those things. This is all the stuff I hold at the end, so you don't have to put up with it at the beginning. <laughs> but uh, Tim, anything else? Anything no, I've nothing forgotten? else. It was a great show today. Thank you, Ron. Great show. Yes, thank you, Ron, Thanks. very much for coming out. Yeah, hey, the only me. thing I, I regret is we don't have more time to spend with you because it I will by fast. Yeah, it always fun. does. I will by fast. So, Ron, thank you for coming. And until next week, keep it raw. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.